Amanda Duchesne, originally from Minnesota, been playing camogie for Atlanta for two years. Hi, I'm Fiona O'Donoghue. I'm from Dublin, Ireland. Um, I just took up camogie when I moved here to Atlanta and I love it. My name's Zoe Beato. I'm 16. I'm from Atlanta. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm from Atlanta and I'm Zoe's mom. They come from everywhere to play camogie in Atlanta, where it's become bigger than any of the other GEA games. Neither Jen nor Zoe have ever even been to Ireland, but they have an Irish coach in Johnny O'Sullivan. And off you go, Zoe. That's it, sell it. Beautiful. Off you go, Philip. The Irish and the Americans come together for competition day, a sevens tournament with some very interested spectators, like Lou, proud father of Jen and of granddaughter Zoe. I think it's a great game, I really do. I like the action portion of it. I like the fact that they're pretty well guarded so they aren't gonna get their face busted real easy, which is always a concern when you've got a pretty young granddaughter. <laughs> as such. But uh, other one, I really like it real well. I always liked field hockey and uh, it's very, very similar, except uh, you know the using of the bat, which you pick it up with your hands, it makes a big difference. And the scoring's a little different, but it's, it's a great game. I really recommend it. Hurling took off there a couple of years ago with a, with a great guy in town called Kevin Quinn from Galway and he just worked on it and he lives south of town and, and near a university and he actually recruited there and he actually started the thing from scratch. Uh, no, zero Irish girls uh, taught them the game and right now they, they were in the final in the Nationals last year and, and they're probably going to be pretty strong here again this year so it's a great testament to him and Kevin's back in Galway if he gets a chance to see this uh, we, we owe him a, great, a debt of thanks. The mix of cultures is evident, with music, jerseys and even Barry's tea, all the way from Ireland, while the trophies are filled with peaches, which this part of the world is famous for. They're all united by camogie, with one team travelling all the way from Colorado for the pure love of the game. Uh, how far does it take to get to Denver? Well, by plane it's about three and a half hours, by car it's about 20, and if you are to take an ox and a cart like they used to, it'd probably take about six months. <laughs> Why on earth would you do that then? Um, as adults and playing a sport that is as competitive and aggressive as hurling and camogie and Gaelic football, we just do not have that option anymore. Um, the footballs and then it turns into kickball and solo pitch softball and we still want to be athletes and we still want to be fit. And the draw to this sport from Americans is just so competitive and so great that, you know, we'll travel to anywhere. In Denver, we just, we're so isolated, we don't have any other teams, we'll travel as far as we can to get a game. Sixteen teams across four codes took part in the Peach Cup, mostly from the southeast, and every one of them with a story to tell of how they took up camogie. Um, so I moved to St. Louis about six years ago, and I always had a background in very individual sports, running and rowing, uh, dance, that sort of thing. And when I moved down to St. Louis, I was just looking to make friends. Sports are an easy way to do that. and. Uh, was looking for a running club and came up with a St. Louis Gaelic Athletic Club website and uh, I thought this is kind of cool and crazy and nobody is going to teach an adult how to play soccer but it looks like they'll teach me to play this so uh, kind of went out to my first practice not really expecting anything and, and got hooked very quickly. I think it's it's the fact that it is an incredibly technical game, um, especially for an American. That maybe if you come from a softball background, you might be, be good at striking in the air. If you come from a field hockey background, you might be good at ground hurling. But I have yet to see anyone who comes out and it just has a mastery of all the skills. And so I feel like it kind of levels the playing field. So the fact that it's technical, anybody can pick up these things, and there are lots of things you can do on your own. But then when you get out there, it's such a fast, intense game, and um, the camaraderie among camogie teams and amongst your own team is just unmatched by anything else. I think because you have to go out and play hard in a, in a sport where you know you're kind of putting your limbs at risk a bit, um, it just builds, it builds some great character and some, some good bonds. Oh, we love it. I don't think any, it's the fastest growing sport over here other than rugby. We, it's completely different from what we grow up with. I think maybe the difference is, is what really keeps it alive. It's just so fun, so fast, so difficult. Did you have to break down any sort of psychological barriers to take it up? No, you know, a lot of us come from intensive sports. A lot of us come from rugby, uh, field hockey, softball, soccer. So the mental barriers aren't there. We're just still so happy that we can run around and play and hit the ball and get a good sweat in and hit each other. That's kind of nice too. <laughs> Really? Oh yeah, the aggressiveness is a big part of it. Um, we still love this sport, especially because it's difficult and it's not hands-off. It's a great sport. 
What sort of reaction do you get from your family and your American friends? Um, I think there's a lot of people who think you're kind of crazy and a little intense. Um, uh, certainly a lot of bruises and get kind of banged up coming away from it. So people people at work specifically sometimes give you a look. Um, but it's a great conversation starter too. And a lot of the times it, all it takes is them coming out and seeing, you know, how fast and and interesting the players and how passionate you are about it and that it's really not quite as dangerous as it looks that um, they, they understand that most people are really supportive of it after a while. Have you ever been to Ireland? Have you ever seen a top camogie game? Have you, have you seen it at the top I level? Have, I, haven't, um, I haven't seen any games personally. Uh, we do our best to watch them. Uh, the, the Camogie Association president, Alien Lawler, recently sent over a DVD of the 2012 final at our request so we could kind of watch because a lot of the girls haven't. Um, I went over to Ireland just in January this year for the first time, so that was pretty exciting. Got to go to Croke Park and talk curling with everybody while I was there. So. Just finally, are you here to win? We're here to win. We're here to take the cup home, full of peaches. <laughs> that bit didn't work out for Denver, as host club Atlanta won the Peach Cup and player of the tournament was 16-year-old Zoe Beato. This is Jerome Quinn reporting for the Camogie Association.